Hello and welcome back to Seaside Garage and the Commander. I just picked this up in my storage unit. There's some stuff that I really want to get done on it quickly because it's quite difficult to pick it up at the moment because at my storage facility it needs to be able to move under its own power. At the moment it's really hard to start. It doesn't break. But the biggest issue at the moment is that the ignition barrel in the cabin is broken. I have, with a screwdriver, put it into ignition, so when I put power to the battery, it is on ignition. I cannot switch the uh, ignition on and off with the key. Therefore, I have rigged up a remote starter, and uh, I can start the engine up using this button. I cannot, sh I, I cannot shut it off, because if I remove the battery, it will just run on its own power circuit from the generator. So in order to switch it off, I, I pull the, uh, the relay for the fuel pump, and then it dies. That's quite annoying because it means that I will have to do a lot of stuff in the engine bay each and every time I have to fire it up, put the remote starter on and all that. Also, it's a bit dangerous because in case of a fire or something else, it's difficult to shut it off once again. So I would really like to maybe fix it or maybe just find out how much stuff I need to search on, the, on eBay or something like that to fix it because it would be nice to just jump in and turn the key. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. Right now, I can just turn the key from side to side with no change. In a Saab, it is supposed to be only possible to remove the key with the, uh, with the gear selector in, in reverse. That is not the case either on this. So I think I might end up having to get a whole new unit for this, but uh, let's just try to remove all the plastic bits and then see if we can fix it, because that would be a lot of fun. Working on the Saab inside of here is really nice, because considering that this has been in the garden for so long, under a Saab, it's really nice in here. It's a bit moldy. <laughs> but not even close to being as bad as the princess. I couldn't even be inside the princess to begin with before I cleaned it without feeling sick, actually. This one, it's not that bad. It actually smells kind of, kind of moldy nice, if that makes sense. It's a weird thing about smells and cars, even though it might not be a very pleasant smell. Sometimes it just adds on to the personality of that car in my world. Each and every time I have picked up this sap, for instance, then I, then I can smell the sap in my clothes. Maybe I shouldn't attach so many feelings to cars, but this is what we do when we are petrol heads, I think. Another thing that I have decided to do on the sap is uh, I have actually dropped off all four alloy wheels, the beautiful Inca, Super Inca wheels, to a tire shop, and then I have bought some new tires for it. Um, I would like to do that kind of stuff myself, and I do have a tire machine, an old school one, but it doesn't really work uh, with aluminum rims. I risk damaging them, and that would be a shame because they are in pretty good condition on this. But at the moment, this car is flat on all four tires each and every time I need to pick it up. One of the tires has already blown up, the others are just about to, and I would it's just so annoying. That being said, Tires are expensive. This time around, I was lucky to find two almost brand new used tires, and then I bought two matching set of tires for that. So it's not that bad. But um, as I told you in the Lada Neva video, I am unemployed at the moment. I don't have any job. This is at the moment my job, which is the best job that I have ever had, but it's not going to sustain me for long, unfortunately. It costs way more than I get from this. Yes, I do get a little bit of money from the YouTubing. I do get some from my Patreons, which helps me out a lot. But in the grand scheme of things, stuff needs to happen. I am hoping to make a business in my garage revolving around my hobby, the videos, the fixing of cars, maybe begin to sell some cars and maybe begin to fix cars for others. I really hope to do that. That would be awesome. But... Um, yeah, the future will tell. At the moment, I'm just trying to keep costs down a little bit, which I'm really bad at. I just bought a gigantic bunch of stuff for the Mahari. But anyway, the tires on this, it'll just make it so much more nice to work on. And sometimes you have to do something good for the cars to, uh, to feel the potential, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. 
these seats are some of the best seats of the 80s, in my opinion. And um, I'm not really sure which seats that I currently own that I like the, the best, but I think it's these. Or maybe the princess. The princess is also really nice, but uh, it depends on what you're going to use the seat for. In a sporty application, uh, the seats in the princess would be really bad. This one is a bit better because you have the bolsters on the side that holds you in a little bit. What I find interesting about these seats are this. They are apparently automatically heated seats. Yeah, it, it, it's most likely completely normal for the Saabs. I don't know. I can't remember if my previous had that. Most likely it didn't work if it did. But I'm interested in uh, knowing how it works and uh, also yeah, <laughs> knowing if it is safe because I always thought that heated seats was a, a fire hazard, to be honest. But apparently it looks like we have some kind of spring tension thing right there that most likely tells you if someone is sitting in the seat or not and then turns on the heat. All the plugs were disconnected when I started work on this, so either it is blowing fuses or maybe someone owned this car with the same fear as I am, as I have, that uh, they will just burst into flame. <laughs> in the cabin, as you can see, the carpets are looking so so nice, uh, considering that this has been an outdoor car for so many years. There is no signs of uh, of critters or anything in here, which is pretty amazing, actually. What I'm going to attempt is to remove all of this plastic stuff around the ignition barrel now, and I think I don't think I have to remove the driver's seat for that. Now I have a lot more room, so I'm gonna get started finding screw screws and then screw them and then remove all of those and then we should be able to just take it out. So all the screws used to fit this I'm going to put into the ashtray. So please remind me when I can't remember that. 25 ører. 25 ører. This is a, a quarter of, of one Danish krone. They are no longer used. They are obsolete. This one is from 1995. Oh, that must be just around the time that this car was actually imported to Denmark. Can't remember exactly, but I think it's around that point. Remember, this car is from, is from Switzerland because it's an only Switzerland edition. And then it was imported to Denmark and someone dropped their, their fortune. I don't have a socket that fits this, of course, but what I do have is one of these. And then by hammering like that, I should be able to make it come loose. Yep, it's working. Is it enough to just spin it off? Yeah. Okay, so this yellow bit of plastic goes underneath this console. And this must be the, the area that the shaft resides in. There was supposed to be a nut right there, I think, going up into this hole. But when looking with a mirror, I think you can see that it's missing. But on the other side, we have one. I'm going to try to remove that because I have space to go underneath there with a socket and then uh, see if we can take it apart. So it was pretty fiddly, but I got the Torx head out and I think it should be possible to take it apart now like that. And this must be the piece of a shifter that locks the key in place when you put it in reverse. I believe that the main issue is right around this area because for some reason when I turn some uh, turn the key in the in the barrel it doesn't turn this part of the of the system. I think taking this off will reveal the problem. Hmm. 
This is the one that I could turn with the screwdriver, this down here. And put it in and out of ignition. This does not seem to work together with this. I think it's something internal in the barrel that is broken then. I'm just going to take this one out as well to find out how it's connected together with the reverse gear. At the moment I think it's the barrel that is the problem. Maybe I could just swap that, but... Oh yeah. Here we just have some cocks that is supposed to lock it out in some way. So yeah, I'm pretty sure the issue is down there. I just don't know how to get that barrel out. Often it's something with the hole in the side that needs to be pressed in, but often it needs to be possible to turn the key in order to line the holes up. I think I got it. Oh yeah. So yeah, it seems to be broken. There's a piece of it right here. It's not really this that's broken, it's actually the bit down there. Oh, this is really close. There we go. It's off. Now I think I can take up this. Now I think I can extract this one. Enough to turn this one around. And pull it out I like that. There is supposed to be a ledge all the way across that is broken off. Hmm, I'm going to attempt something. It's pretty much free. If it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm gonna weld something on and then grind it. This could be one of those repairs that works forever or breaks in the first attempt using it. But uh, it seems to be pretty solid at least. Maybe I need to take a bit more off to make it fit, but we'll, we'll see about that. Should go down a bit like that. Whoop. And then we need that locking ring like that. So there we go, now it works. I can take the key out there. If I put it into ignition, I can't. And so next up, it should just be a matter of fitting this. It's rather late at night now, but everything is back together. I had to fiddle with a lot of stuff because it seems as though a lot of the joints and the barrel and all that have some play in it. And I have greased everything up and now I can put the key in. Turn it to first position. Now I cannot take it out. That's also good. Before I could take it out in all positions, so that's a, also an improvement. Then to the next. Now it's almost at ignition, and then I can turn it the last bit, and it springs back. So it's working now. Let's see for how long, but it's working now. That's the most important bit. I'm going to install it tomorrow, because now it's very late, and then hopefully we can start the engine up from the cabin. And I think that, uh, well, the Saab is born from jets. You're supposed to start it from the cabin. If it was born from propeller planes, then maybe it was okay to go to the front and start up the engine as I do now. But <laughs> let's hope it works tomorrow. See you later. So it's the day after and I have now installed the unit back into the car and I'm pretty ready to test it actually. And then I found this, an old parking ticket. This is from uh, Odense, 29th of December, when this parking ticket was bought and put in the window of the Saab 900 Turbo Commander. I was 16 years old and uh, skateboarding in exactly this area at the same time and all that. <laughs> That's pretty fun to think about. No, I can't remember it, but those days were a bit hazy after all. I still got the skateboard. <laughs> but I somehow lost the skills. Anyway, 
it's now in the car. I think it would be a wise decision to just test it out before putting all that plastic trim back on. I can put it into ignition, take the car out of reverse, and then I cannot remove the key. That is how it's supposed to be. So back in reverse, one click further. I can hear the water pump or the fuel pump spraying some fuel somewhere. Got to check that out. But um, we got a light. And then the next position should be cranking. Let's try. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's perfect. So now it's possible to actually start the Saab 900 turbo from within the car and not in the engine bay. And that means it's time to remove the remote starter. It might not seem like a big deal, but it's kind of a big deal for me because it feels a bit more like a real car when you can actually start it with the key and not having to hardwire it. So I heard some fuel spewing out when I put it into ignition and the fuel pump primed as it is supposed to do. It turned out to be leaking from back here. It seems to be from the accu accumulator or fuel filter thingy back there. That I think could be the reason why I have a hard time starting this because it seems as though it gets easier to start the more attempts that I give it because building up pressure with a leak in the system is going to be difficult. And I'm pretty sure that k system needs some pressure to work. Anyway, I'm not gonna work on that right now. And uh, maybe this video is slightly boring and slightly long if you are interested in the whole car, because this is pretty much just something specific. But I know from experience when back when I had my 900 that it's a common issue that you have key problems on the old Saabs. Very often it's because you, you lent the car to someone who didn't know about that reverse gear thing and then and they just pulled the key out or, or pulled it into neutral before putting in, in, in the gear. And so a lot of people are having issues with that. This is not a guide in any way, but this at least shows how it looks inside, how you take it apart and all that. And maybe that can help some others. I hope this fix will work for a long time, but we'll see about that. But I'm going to wrap this video up now. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support on Patreon and see you in the next one.